Uh, well, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to St. Mark's and St. Andrew's online. This is a new experience for us all, and it's uh, great you found us here, whether you, you found us through Facebook or whether you're in Zoom, or maybe you're catching up uh, later um, through uh, our YouTube channel. It's great that you'll be able to be with us today. Uh, I've got for us a, um, a getting ready prayer uh, for us, and it's got some actions, so I need you all to get involved with me, uh, if you can. And it goes like this. God, as we get ready to be with you, open our ears to listen to you. Open our minds to help us think about you. Open our eyes to see you in the world around and open our hearts to love you more. Amen. It's Palm Sunday today, and look, I've got my, I've got my palm ready. Have you got your palms? If you've got a palm, give it a little wave now, or you can go and find it for a little bit later on. We're going to uh, need these in a while. Um, palm Sunday is really significant uh, for us as Christians. Uh, as Jesus, the powerful king, uh, as he showed his divine kingship in humility, entering in Jerusalem on a donkey and not only entering uh, King David's great city, uh, King David, his ancestor, not only riding on a donkey in humility, uh, but that he came there in order to give up his life for us upon the cross. And that's the real significance of Palm Sunday as we enter into Holy Week uh, together. We recognise why it is that Jesus came as king uh, to King David's city. He came to give his life for us, to die upon the cross. Some words from Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Lift up your heads to the coming King. Bow before God and adore him. Praise the King of kings. We're going to sing. Please join in uh, with our singing.
Lord Jesus, thank you so much that uh, we can meet together in your presence. Help us to meet you afresh today, our living, uh, our living, risen, uh, glorified King of Kings. Please uh, help our hearts to bow before you. Please help us to meet with you and know you. Please help us to worship you. Amen. Uh, so uh, who do we have here this morning? Uh, we're welcoming uh, to our morning service people from St Andrew's Church. And I wonder if you're here from St Andrew's, do you want to give us a wave? Um, in fact, you can't see what I can see. Let me share my other screen, um, which is this one. OK, let's try that again. Uh, St Andrew's, uh, let's have a wave. People from St Andrew's, we got one or two there and others on Facebook. Um, and there'll be members probably from breakfast at nine as well. Hopefully you've managed to have yourself a good breakfast. Uh, do you want to give us a wave? Uh, St Andrews, if you're here, good to see you. Welcome, uh, it's like breakfast at nine. And of course, there are going to be people here from St Mark's congregation as well. Um, do you want to give us a wave too from St Mark's? Uh, in fact, it was due to be a Together at 10 service at St Mark's this morning. I wonder if we've got any people from, St, from Together at 10 as well. If you're here together with us, then it's great to see you as well. Let me bring the camera back. I don't know how to do it anymore. Two. Oh, here it is. To me. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful technology. I need uh, someone sitting next to me here to press buttons, but uh, of course that's not allowed in this uh, current day and age. Uh, let me give a couple of notices to us all. Um, this week is our last Lent course on Wednesday um, with contributions from uh, Phil and myself. Um, and uh, that'll be pre-recorded, uh, but uh, why not tune in uh, Wednesday at 7.30 um, uh, with others. Um, you could even try uh, being clever and watching it through Zoom, um, and then uh, uh, having a chat with other people that uh, you've invited into your Zoom room, as it were. Uh, after the service, we're gonna try breakout rooms and see what it's like talking to one another in separate sections um, of Zoom. Um, have a play with Zoom, you can find all kinds of great things in there. So one of the things you can do is you can watch the Lent course together and you can chat about it. Um, have a go working that out. On Thursday we're going to have a live communion service remembering Jesus Last Supper. Um, that will be live, that'll be at 7.30. Um, it was due of course to be a meal at 6.30 followed by communion at 7.30 um, but uh, why don't you have your meals at home uh, and then bring on some bread or bring on some wine and uh, we'll celebrate together uh, as we read through the account of Jesus Last Supper uh, in the upper room with his disciples uh, as they prepared uh, for Good Friday. And then on Friday, uh, we're going to uh, record a number of people uh, reading different passages from the uh, Passion uh, for us. Um, and that'll be recorded and we can uh, watch that anytime on Good Friday for your Good Friday reflection. Um, and um, if you want to process, I know that there was going to be a walk of witness, uh, which won't now be taking place. But uh, if you um, would like to do your uh, uh, daily activity exercise um, you could take your phone with you um, plug in the headphones and listen to the passion narrative as you as you do your walk on Friday so that's a possibility but back to this morning um, in a short while we're going to be making a palm cross and um, I don't know whether you've had a chance to um, to look um, at the little video uh, but I'll show that again in a minute we're going to need something like this a piece of uh, I've got some wallpaper here, I don't know if that's the right length, but I hope it is. Um, you're going to need one of these and um, you're going to need a pen and a pair of scissors um, so if you want to join in uh, or you could do that later on in the day. Um, but let's just take a moment of quiet. Um, a moment of quiet for our confession um, and bringing ourselves afresh to God um, at the start of this uh, new day. Just a moment of quiet uh, before we join together in the prayer, uh, which is on the screen.
Let's pray this prayer together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, the prayer for today, which you can pray along with if you like as well. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. We're going to sing together. I don't know if it's a song that you know. If you know it, then please join in. Otherwise, enjoy the music and the lyrics as they lead us into worship of God. Oh, 
Our Bible reading this morning is from Mark chapter 11. Uh, so grab a Bible if you've got one to hand or uh, we'll snuggle up to the screen and we're going to watch this. I hope that the um, sound from the video comes through better. God's Story, Palm Sunday. So part of God's story happened on a day we call Palm Sunday and it begins like this. Remember how God sent his son Jesus to rescue us? Well, not everybody believed that Jesus was really God's son and the rescuer, but the ones who did believe in him did something pretty cool on Palm Sunday. It started just like any other day for Jesus. He was heading into Jerusalem with his disciples, but before they got there, Jesus did something surprising. He stopped and sent two of his disciples to go get a young donkey from a nearby village. He even told them exactly where the owner had last tied it up. They weren't sure why he needed the donkey, but they obeyed him. Kids, would you be willing to obey Jesus even if he asked you to do something you didn't understand? Anyway, when the disciples got back with the donkey, they threw their coats on its back like a saddle and Jesus climbed up. Pretty soon, the disciples saw why Jesus needed it. See, crowds of people came to the road and started laying coats and tree branches to make a path for Jesus. When this happened, many people recognized that Jesus was a king. Only kings came into a city like this. So Jesus rode the donkey like he was a one-man parade. And the crowds praised Jesus by yelling things like, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, and peace in heaven and glory in the highest, because they believed Jesus was the rescuer. But remember how some people didn't believe Jesus was God's son? Well, they told Jesus to make everybody stop yelling. They didn't think Jesus deserved to be treated like a king. You know what Jesus said? He told them, if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. Well, the people who didn't believe in Jesus didn't like thinking about people or rocks praising him. And that made Jesus sad. He actually started crying. And not just crying, weeping. Here, the people were standing next to the rescuer they'd been wanting and waiting for their whole lives. And they were missing it. But even though Jesus cried, Palm Sunday isn't a sad story. Easter is all about Jesus' amazing rescue, and Palm Sunday is a reminder of just how special that rescue is, and how much Jesus loves everyone. And that's the story of Palm Sunday. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus was traveling. He sent his disciples to get a donkey. People spread coats and branches on the road. They praised Jesus. Some people didn't recognize that he was the king. That made Jesus sad. He had come to rescue them. A few days later, he would show just how much he loves us. And that's a part of God's story. Oh, welcome back. Uh, if you uh, were following your uh, Bible um, through that, you'd have noticed that there were some extra bits, um, that is, if you're able to hear it uh, clearly enough. Uh, and those extra bits came from Luke's version of the story. Um, now, I don't know who you've got with you. Um, I can see that some of you have got other people there in the room uh, with you. Maybe some of you are on your own. Um, but either way, I'd like you to have a think about um, some questions, which I'm going to put here up on the screen. Um, as you read, as you heard that story, um, and as you thought about it, uh, what was your favourite part of the story? What part of the story surprised you? And as the people shouted Hosanna, they shouted that because they were filled with joy. Jesus was their hero. What do you think you might have shouted from the crowd if you had been there that day? Uh, have a, a couple of moments just to chat with whoever's there with you or have a think about it yourself on those three questions. Uh, well, I love the enthusiasm uh, with which they greeted Jesus uh, that day. Um, I'd imagine that being the donkey owner, you might have been a bit uh, confused uh, what was going on. Uh, imagine if you're the donkey 
um, you might have been a bit confused what was going on as well. Uh, and the crowds, um, they thought Jesus was just the greatest hero who had come among them that day. A lot of them had heard about the things he was doing. Uh, he had healed many people. Uh, he had fed hungry people. He had calmed a storm. Uh, he did incredible things. And uh, they recognized that this was someone truly special that they wanted to honor uh, that day. And I wonder what you might have said if you were in that crowd. Uh, perhaps afterwards as we chat over a virtual coffee or maybe in the comments, I'd love to hear some of the things uh, that uh, you uh, would have said uh, if Jesus had walked through your streets uh, that day, knowing who he is yourselves. Well, we're going to have a, a go at our craft uh, now um, and think more on those things in just a while. And um, let me just bring you back uh, to me for a second. Here we are. And now before we get into our craft, I don't know whether you managed to find any paper. Uh, you want to do this. Um, maybe you don't um, or uh, uh, you'll be doing this later on. So I'm going to um, uh, do some bits and pieces and then we're going to show a video just to see how you can make this uh, um, palm cross for yourselves. Uh, now, uh, you need a pen, a pair of scissors, and what's what this pen will do, I reckon. Now, I, I wrote down a verse in our newsletter, uh, which I think actually is rather too long uh, to write all of it out on here. It's a great verse. Christ himself carried our sins in his body onto the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. It's by his wounds you have been healed. But I'm just going to write on my um, palm cross on the, uh, the inside of it, um, not the furry side, but the, uh, the smooth side, I'm going to write down, Hosanna, King Jesus died for me. Uh, Hosanna, exclamation mark, King Jesus died um, for me. Now, I've got no idea how to turn this strip of paper into a palm cross, um, but uh, we're about to find out how uh, as we watch this little video together. Thank you. 
Well, I don't know how you got on. This is what mine turned out like. <laughs> uh, no, not really. <laughs> um, that's what I've got. <laughs> it's it's almost there, um, but I'll need to have another go. Oh, yeah, well done. I think we. Oh, oh, fantastic! We've got some that have been made over there. <laughs> Congratulations. Well done. Well done, everybody. Well, um, here's a song for the young at heart. I don't know if we've still got any young people uh, with us here. I think that they are. I think there's some people uh, working on their crosses together. Now, um, you need to use your um, palm cross for our next song. The next song is called Hosanna Rock. Uh, which I think gives a clue as to the style of it. And I hope that the music comes out a bit better this time. I'm going to mute myself. Uh, join in or at least uh, dance along if you feel like dancing and celebrating. Who would you say is the greatest figure of the 20th century? Uh, Muhammad Ali, Winston Churchill, Albert Einstein, uh, Mother Teresa, Ian Botham, Bill Gates. Uh, so many different choices, uh, people great in their respective fields. But who is the greatest though? How do you measure greatness? How do you become great? In uh, Mark's Gospel, in chapter nine, the disciples had been arguing about who was the greatest. In chapter nine and verse 33, uh, Jesus spotted them doing this and asked them, uh, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Uh, one of the big themes uh, in this section of Mark's Gospel leading up to Jesus' entry into Jerusalem is uh, what does greatness look like? Jesus will show them what true greatness is in the way in which he serves them. Let's pray as we come and look at God's words together this morning. Father God, thank you for your word, uh, which reveals Jesus to us. Uh, please, Lord, we ask that you might teach us this morning from uh, this passage. 
and challenge us by your Holy Spirit that we might learn what it is to people who walk on the way with Christ. Amen. Well, we're in Mark chapter 11 and it'd be great if you've got your Bibles with you to, uh, to look at this uh, with me as we follow it through. I'm going to be asking four times, who is the Messiah and what does he come to do? We're just outside Jerusalem, approaching from Bethany and the Mount of Olives, and the crowds are around us. They're not uh, locals. They're coming into the city for the Passover, the Jewish uh, festival. There's the bustle of travellers en route, the fervour of a nation uh, coming together to worship. And we're walking towards the city on the hill. Uh, that ribbon of walls hugging the contours of the ground above us as we approach it. The people around, well, they know their Old Testament well. They know their past. They know that the Passover, that time uh, 1,500 years ago in Egypt, when uh, God visited the homes of their slave masters with death, but passed over their own homes because they had left signs saying that they belonged to God. Uh, and they know their future too. They can recite uh, verses um, like uh, the verse from Isaiah, uh, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, which we often read at Christmas. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and on his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness forever. These are, are the words of one of God's prophets speaking of their leader to come, the Messiah, the chosen one. The government will be on his shoulders. Uh, who would have that burden? I mean, today, uh, who would want to be a leader uh, of our society uh, of our nation or, or any nation just at this time it's not easy in a time of crisis who would want to take on that burden that mantle of leadership well in jerusalem at this time it was also a mess overrun by a foreign power uh, roman soldiers were everywhere you might wonder today who would take on leadership but then to have been a leader of god's chosen people at the time of jesus coming the government will be on his shoulders what kind of person is this Messiah? What will be his destiny? Uh, he will reign, Isaiah tells us. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Isaiah's words seem to expect some kind of divine government wrapped up in a God-appointed king. The people around Jesus, their hopes for Israel are for a new king like the old one, old King David a restoration of power and influence, a return to political and international supremacy that David and his son Solomon brought to the nation, the people of Israel, in their time. But this is Jesus, and Mark has already told us a different story about him, about his kingship. Uh, chapter 10 of Mark's Gospel doesn't show this to be a march uh, to victory, to a palace or to a downing street. It shows it to be a march to humiliation and death. And so in chapter 10 and verse 33 and 34, Jesus says, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. These are the words of Jesus, the prophet. He knows the future and he is preparing his disciples for it. This is his prophetic word for the end of his life. And it's not just an idle remark. It's written three times here in Mark's gospel in chapter 8, 31 and 9, 31 and chapter 10, 33. So where are we now in Jesus prophecy? Uh, we're going up to Jerusalem. We're at the gates were at the first act in the first sentence of Jesus prophecy we're at a doorway uh, to the terrible train of events uh, which uh, will lead the world to go dark 
and all hopes to be lost until the light returns in glory. Who is the Messiah? And what does he come to do? Jesus asked his disciples to go ahead and find a donkey. The Lord needs it and he'll send it back shortly after. What's he doing? What's this about? He's come all this way on foot. Why can't he just go on walking as he comes into Jerusalem? Well, there's another prophecy from the Old Testament that the Passover crowd will have known instantly from Zechariah the prophet about 500 years before. Uh, and a prophecy that's loaded with meaning. In Zechariah uh, chapter 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, verse 9, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. If we were to glance further uh, into the book of Zechariah, we'd see how much all of this meant for God's people. Zechariah is the prophet who calls Israel to return to me and I will return to you. Uh, again and again from chapter one and right through, that's his theme. Come back, seek the Lord. This was his plea uh, through Zechariah. Jesus' closest disciples have seen Jesus fulfill this already in his ministry so far, in all that he's been doing. And now for the rest of the people to see, um, uh, to see and understand this, Jesus acts out the rest of chapter nine as a way of saying, this is who I am. I am your king, righteous and victorious, bringing salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. Jesus very carefully arranged donkey ride is a clear, obvious message to everyone. He's acting out and dramatizing the fact that he is God's Messiah, bringing about the words given to the prophet in the past. Who is the Messiah and what has he come to do? Well, the drama on the road to Jerusalem was not lost to the people who were walking alongside Jesus. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Uh, all in verses 9 and 10 uh, of our passage. Uh, they recognised the meaning of what they saw. And they chanted words of celebration. They quoted words from, uh, from the Psalms. Psalm 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I doubt whether they had any scripture parchments in their hands that day as they shouted out these words or whether they could even read. But they knew their psalm by heart. They also knew what came four verses earlier. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Jesus' claim that he was God's Messiah was received by them. They knew what he was saying. And they responded in kind. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What was this kingdom going to be like? I don't know whether they knew. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David. They chanted. Was it political? Uh, were they seriously thinking of overthrowing Roman rule? It was probably all mixed up in their heads. What about the evils that the Roman rule had done to them? At uh, the time when the Roman governor had those Galileans slaughtered and mixed their blood with the blood of, the sac of their sacrifices. If you were a Galilean, what would you do? What would that do to you? Would it make you lust for revenge, for an overthrow of power? Or when Pilate, uh, when he uh, took Jesus to be arrested by Caesar, uh, they said it was because he was claiming to be king. Uh, we have no king but Caesar, the crowds cried. How can you challenge Caesar? That would be madness. Yet those people on the road around Jesus as he entered into Jerusalem, they saw him as a Messiah. That was clear. But what did that mean? What kind of Messiah? 
Are you going to come and be a political leader to overthrow our evil leadership? Who is the Messiah and what has he come to do? Well, let's uh, open up our eyes. Uh, when we see presidents and rulers uh, on the news, how do they arrive? In limousines and Bentleys, uh, in golden coronation coaches, in polished diplomatic four by fours, heavy with armoured plating and flanked by security. Jesus' idea of kingship overturns our nation of how leaders should behave and how they should act. Uh, what is that word gentle doing in here? Uh, humility, well, that's hard enough to grasp, but at least we can accept it. Uh, our leaders often try to show how humble they are at times. But gentleness, well, that overturns our ideas completely about what leadership should be about. Uh, when they brought in the bicycle scheme into London, I don't know if you remember that they called them Boris bikes. I wonder if anyone has ever seen our leader on one of them. Wouldn't that be refreshing? It's easy to leave the arrival of Jesus in Jerusalem in the first century. Uh, we know his life and his ministry were much more than that. Jesus was and is the Messiah. He came to announce the kingdom of God and he makes his way to the temple at dusk to claim his ground. But his example of humility and gentleness is not just something for him. It's for us that we are to be humble and gentle. We're not to claim glory and power in this world, but to know a present reality, a far greater reward, a promise in heaven. Uh, we don't therefore put value on you know, gleaning fat metal cars. Uh, we don't rely on wealth or power or status or uh, dynasty. Nor should we give any grounds to world leaders who do. Uh, we should give no space to those who show no concern for the poor. No space to those who believe themselves to be above others. Jesus' humility and gentleness found in him, the Son of God, remains utterly opposed to any kind of supremacy, national or racial any kind of favoritism. Our Lord rode into Jerusalem to be a crowned king, crowned with thorns, and raised up to in front of the assembled crowds, not on a gilded throne, but on a wooden cross, crucified. Jesus rides into Jerusalem. See your king is coming, gentle, and riding on a donkey. He sets aside our preconceptions, preconceptions of greatness and leadership. And in turning over the tables, as he does in the next scene, he shows that our Christianity, uh, yes, at times should be firm and righteous, but also loving and humble and gentle. Our Lord riding on a donkey, riding to death and glory. Yes, death and glory. Who is the Messiah? And what has he come to do? Jesus is the Messiah, and he's come to open the gates of heaven. He invites us to walk his way, the way of the cross. Amen.
looks okay okay we're going to show a little video and then joe's going to lead us uh, in our intercessions now you won't know the lady um, who's in the video her name's audrey she will introduce herself but um, i'm sure that we know many people like her um, serving uh, christ uh, in these times all around our country uh, right now hi everybody um i'm audrey i'm an ear nose and throat surgeon at a hospital near you i'm here to encourage you to pray 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 we need you your country needs you to pray your uh, hospital needs you to pray your nhs needs you to pray um, we um, are heading towards the most difficult weekend easter bank holiday and everywhere around the country hospitals are preparing um, for what could be an onslaught of this virus um, we need to stand Pray that we would be well, that we'd be able to come to work. Um, pray that we would um, continue to stay fearless. Fear is a crippler, um, but we need to stay fearless to fight this. Um, pray for resources, that we would have equipment, that we would have the personal protective equipment, particularly that we need to keep things going. Pray for the supply chains, that stuff would just keep coming through. Um, Pray for the guys at the top who have to make really difficult decisions um, and pray for the little guys at the bottom, um, our cleaners, um, our clinical support workers, um, catering staff, everybody who's doing their absolute best to keep things running. Um, pray for doctors and nurses, you know, um, we need you. We really, really need your prayers. This battle will not be won um, in the hospital. It'll be won on the knees of saints who are looking up to the one in whom all things consist, to the one who can do all things and he can certainly beat COVID-19. Um, his purposes will be worked out through this, absolutely. Um, but we need you to pray. Pray for, for Christians um, in the NHS. There are a number of us who God has strategically placed in different spots just so that we could um, stand and, and keep the light burning and, 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 and shine that light that, that says, Jesus is Lord. Um, think of faith who's in the emergency department, who, when I saw her the other day, was um, putting on her PPE, just about to see a COVID patient, and she smiled at me and she said, he that is in me is greater than all this. And I was so encouraged. Think of Faith, think of, of um, Karis, who is a consultant general surgeon, who is um, heading up a new ethics committee designed to make decisions about what we're going to do when we have to choose between who gets a ventilator and who doesn't. Um, God has put a Christian in charge of that committee. Yes! Pray for her. She needs your prayers. Pray for me. Um, that I don't go crazy, um, that um, I keep encouraging people, um, that I stay well um, so that I can hug you um, one day uh, and not cough on you. Um, I'm going crazy. I'm going to stop this video now. Um, just keep praying. Pray for us, please. Who's going to lead us in our prayers? Hi, everybody. Um, I thought today that we would use our hands to pray um, that we would in order to pray together we would indicate with our thumbs as we thank God for things we would indicate with our first finger when we pray for families with our middle finger as we think about pray about medical staff and our next finger which is called the weakest where we will just be thinking about people who uh, who are going through trials at the moment and our little finger for um, our children and our young people. And we can do this as we wash our hands. We've been encouraged to wash our hands as we wash those fingers. Um, the, the words that Paul wrote, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So let's pray together and there'll be a short pause between each one. 
and uh, where you can bring things to God yourself. So let's hold our thumbs up and give thanks. We thank you, God, for the 600 people who left the hospitals in Italy who had survived the virus. The creation of new hospitals and staff across the UK. For street parties being organised, communities getting together, but still observing the social distancing. For Joe Wicks and others exercising the nation each day. For that small company, repair company, who repaired a nurse's car when part of it was stolen. For the singing initiatives, encouraging us to sing. For the rainbows, the teddy bears, the palm crosses in our windows. We thank you too for our leaders, as Andy said, who would want to be a leader in this day. And those people keeping the country moving, the van drivers, the lorry drivers, the, st the people working in the stores, the deliveries of our food. So we pray for our families, our church family gathered today that we might care for each other, that no one will feel alone. For our mothers, our fathers, our children, our relatives, that we might be able to be in touch with them, encouraging them. For parents and children in the same home 24 seven, particularly those living in flats and tiny spaces, for patience, understanding, and putting in place a routine for the day. For medical staff working in the hospitals, those in key positions making difficult decisions, the resources for our hospitals, care homes, GPs. Lord, that you would unblock whatever is stopping those goods getting through to the right places. As we head for the Easter weekend and beyond, preparations will be in place in our hospitals, ready to receive the peak of admissions. For those who are weak, just picking up what Audrey said about those who are feeling fearful and particularly those who are working on the front line in our hospitals, nurses, doctors, cleaners, porters, catering staff, those delivering goods to our homes, those working in retail, those moving goods across the country. We pray for those who are not feeling well. Just spend a moment of quietness thinking of people who you know and I know who are going through a tough time at the moment. And let's now think of countries where the virus is hitting hard. Again, let's spend a moment in quietness thinking of those countries which God has put on our hearts. Father, we pray for those who've been furloughed from work and not sure how they'll make ends meet. And for businesses who are struggling financially, trying to get help from the government. And for our children and young people, particularly those young people in the UK who have <clears throat> left their last year in school or who have had to return home from university, we pray really 
for those people who will be deciding the grades for those young people. And we pray for our children across the UK being schooled by their parents, the pressures that are around all those things. And we pray for those who are vulnerable with mental health issues, learning disabilities, and those with addictions. Father God, we pray that we will be driven to our knees as we bang on the door of heaven for you to have mercy on our world, that we might stand together, that we will be fearless to fight this virus in whatever way we can. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Some words from Isaiah 49. Shout for joy, you heavens, rejoice the earth, burst into song, you mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Joe. We're going to um, sing our closing song, uh, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, then come back for a uh, uh, final prayer and a word from me, and, um, uh, and then we'll see who wants to stay on for coffee. Um, let's uh, sing Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Let me pray this uh, prayer for us together. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
I pray for each of us, uh, Lord Jesus, um, that uh, we would know that you are a victorious king, especially uh, in these days of uncertainty and turmoil, uh, to uh, rest in the confidence knowing that you are victorious uh, in your cross and through the cross. Uh, thank you that you are our saviour who came to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Help us to trust in you today uh, and encourage those around us uh, to be able to trust in these eternal realities whilst the uh, daily realities are changing so fast around us. Thank you that you are coming back. You will come back as glorious King and uh, we shall wave those palm branches yet again in celebration uh, as you arrive. Uh, so Lord, I pray that you would give us strength this day to go uh, in your strength uh, and to love those around us, uh, we pray. Amen. Thank you for uh, being with us today. Thank you for bearing with uh, the technical uh, issues and uh, we will get better and better at that. Now I want to encourage you just to stay for a few moments longer um, because there's a great little feature in here which uh, separates people into, um, uh, into groups. And I think maybe some of you might like to have a little chat with one another and you can stay chatting as long as you would like to. Um, I shall turn off the live Facebook link.